Regency Mines is an AIM-listed mineral exploration and development company with a focus on nickel and copper in Western Australia, Queensland and Papua New Guinea. We have Andrew Bell here, Chairman of Regency Mines. Andrew, um, your biggest asset is Mumbari for Regency Mines. Can you give us uh, an idea of the development of the drill program? Yes, we've already announced that we're doing a drill program starting in April uh, or early May. It'll last for two or three months. We'll be about 4,000 metres. We'll infill drill the area already drilled and we'll put, do some scout drilling at the area on top of the plateau. Uh, that 4,000 metres will, we hope, later this year give us an inferred and indicated resource and parts of it may even be a uh, higher category of resource. And it will at the same time be a proof of concept that the mineralization extends over the whole plateau and is highest on the top. Now, you have a joint venture with uh, Direct Nickel. What is the importance um, of this joint venture for the Mumbari project? That lateral heat nickel is traditionally expensive to process, that the known processes that have been used are, tend to be very expensive, both in capital cost and particularly all of them in operating cost, and are of variable effectiveness, and in particular can't treat both the limonite and the laterite clays the same way to extract the nickel. The direct nickel process, uh, and we are the only route to that process at the moment, the direct nickel process uh, can treat both limonites and saprolites the same way, considerably reduces the capital cost because this is a modular process, uses standard materials and also very significantly decreases the operating cost so that we would become one of the bottom 25% of producers by cost per pound. You've said before, Andrew, that the metal contained in this area of Mumbari is equivalent to about $200, $300 billion potentially. Can you uh, tell us uh, what's so special about uh, this area? It's very large. Other plateaus that contain uh, nickel tend to be much smaller in size. The total size of this plateau is 20 kilometres by 7 kilometres. Of course, not all of it will be mineralised or equally mineralised, but that's a huge envelope within which to be looking. Mm -hmm. And uh, do we need to actually extract uh, later lateritic nickel? Is it because the extraction costs are low? Is that the main attraction? <clears throat> well, only about 25% of the world's nickel is in sulphide deposits. Those are in limited places. They were all on the whole created in the first half of the Earth's existence. They're becoming increasingly difficult to find and they will in future be much more expensive to mine because they'll be deeper. So the world, because of its growing need for stainless steel, uh, needs nickel. And with three quarters of the world's nickel in easily accessible lateritic deposits, the only thing that needs to be solved is the metallurgy, the processing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Regency has made a direct uh, stake to invest in direct nickel. Uh, can you see what potential returns you might have from this? Yes. If you take the value of Regency at the moment in terms of market capitalization at £26 million, pounds, our listed company holdings uh, account for over, uh, and our stake in direct nickel itself, which is not listed but will be shortly, are by any construction over £20 million pounds worth. So for about £5 million, pounds, we're getting exposure to all our projects, including Mambari, which you know, could be worth no more than another nickel laterite project uh, when we have a resource there. Or it could, allied with this technology and with our special position in the joint venture with direct nickel, could be worth many billions. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, like mineral exploration generally, it's a lucky dip. Some companies are going to do well, some aren't. There are over 1,400 mining companies listed on the TSX and TSX Venture in Canada. There are only 140 mines in the whole of Canada. Okay, I know, that's quite low. Now, Direct Nickel, uh, what do you think their goals might be going forward? I think um, Direct Nickel is going to IPO. They want to do that. They want to achieve liquidity. They may reverse into a company. Um, now that we are the biggest shareholder apart from the management in Direct Nickel, uh, we would probably encourage them to put off getting listed for as long as possible and certainly wait till the demonstration plant has been completed and come out with its results later this year. Uh, but I'm not on the board of Direct Nickel. If they choose to go to the market earlier, we can't stop them. And I'm sure that they will make the decision they consider to be in the best interest of shareholders. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you see your Regency's strategic uh, relationship with Direct Nickel? For example, uh, your geothermal project in uh, Papua New Guinea. 
Yes, when we develop uh, Membari eventually and make a mine of it, as we hope and expect to do, we will need to use power, and um, there isn't a lot of electricity available in the province. And so the two obvious sources are either hydropower um, or geothermal. Hydropower is certainly readily available, um, but it's always expensive to set up. Geothermal is in use already in PNG. Uh, the Lihia mine works with geothermal energy, and uh, we have potential sources of geothermal near us, so um, we have pegged that ground mm -hmm. in the joint venture. Okay, um, Oracle Coalfields, can you give us an update on what's happening uh, with that? You did make a, an investment. Yeah, well, uh, once again, we want to invest in something that is potentially very large rather than in something where the downside is, say, uh, you know, 50%, but where the upside is only two times. Uh, as with the direct nickel investment, as with Mambari, uh, if it goes right, this is huge because here's a company with a market value of less than £20 million on uh, plus, just coming up to AIM in the next month or two. And it will, it, its bankable feasibility will be finished in the summer. And we expect it to be going into production and to be quite a robust project. And it will be the biggest coal producer in Pakistan. And it's only a few, two or three hundred kilometers from Karachi across level ground with good communications. Karachi has 18 million people and they only get five hours power a day. There's a critical energy shortage. The Pakistanis want to import coal and use coal to generate electricity rather than using oil and uh, natural gas. And the uh, coal produced here will substitute for imports, both in power and uh, <clears throat> in making uh, cement, Lucky mm -hmm. Cement will be one of the customers, it's expected. Mm -hmm. You have a strategic stake uh, with Red Rock Resources now, as they, with the mines in Colombia, move into um, you know, producing cash flow. Um, what do you intend to do with your <coughs> investment there as value increases? I think Regency will hope that Red Rock remains an associate company. Okay, and for Regency, uh, what will your focus uh, be, uh, uh, sort of the plan for the next two years? Will you be making more investments? Will, where will you be putting the money? Where will you, mm. will you be <laughs> raising money? If we could find some really attractive way to increase our exposure to either coal or copper, I think we'd take it. So you can assume that we're always looking for opportunities. And um, you really can't tell what's just about to come up and you can't tell what may be around the corner, but uh, we are looking at one or two things that might have potential at the moment, and we'll be working very hard on the existing projects. But what is going extremely well, uh, and on schedule at the moment, is the work we're doing at Mambari, and uh, that's going to be exciting. But what we're also planning is some exploration on our ground in Western Australia and in Queensland, and we have some very considerable, interesting copper targets an old mining area that were 19th century mines uh, in Queensland where we will be doing uh, uh, geophysics in the early part of this year and expect to be moving onto the ground and drilling later in the year. And uh, the potential there for reasonable copper gold discovery and potentially gold discoveries is uh, huge because as far as we can see, uh, since the 19th century there really hasn't been significant or appropriate exploration in this area. Okay, so uh, you're known uh, you know, quite as the deal maker. What do you look for uh, when you make deals? We look first at some way of limiting our risk so that when we go in, our risk is not huge, but the downside is very much more. And that's really also what people investing in, this, uh, in, in companies like us in this part of the market are doing. They know that any individual company could be one of the, say, 90% of companies that will never have a mine. Uh, but they know that the, if it's in the 10%, the rewards from that greatly exceed their possible losses in the companies that will uh, never produce a mine, most of which have nine or even 900 lives and keep on remaking themselves because hope springs eternal. Now, we apply the same methodology, but unlike an investor who can spread his bets, we can't walk away from our failures quite so easily. So we put a lot of research and thought into what we do so that we try to minimize the risks of exploration, mm -hmm. which in the normal course, your chances are one in a hundred. But in something like Mambari, 
because we know, for example, that it's lateritic, therefore flat lying, our chances of hitting are quite good. If we're looking at coal, um, again, if you're in a coal basin, your chances of hitting coal are pretty good. So that limits some of the downside. So whatever we do, both in Red Rock and in Regency, we have been aiming to limit downside while keep unlimited upside. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew. And yep. thank you for watching Regency Minds.